Welcome to Canvas Projects, a virtual program offering from the Pflugerville Public Library. I'm Meg Miller, an adult services librarian, here with another fun project geared to ages 12 and up for you to complete. Those who register through the library calendar can pick up their material supply kits, and for everyone else watching, we hope you give these techniques a try. This month's project is a messy canvas. Let's start with a look at the supplies being provided. In our envelopes here, uh, we have our list of supplies, and you will probably already notice when you take yours out that I didn't ultimately include the paper clip. Um, I think we can complete the project definitely without this. Um, that was really to help you remove the vinyl stencil later, um, and if you have one, you may decide to use it, but if not, you'll still be able to get the project completed. Um, so inside, we are using an 8x10 canvas panel this month, um, so it's just really thin. Uh, the paints we sent uh, were our primary colors, red, yellow, blue, um, and then a small paint pot of white, which uh, for the tutorial I'll show you, I'm going to use as my uh, cover color. You can really use any cover color um, if you wanted. You could do it something different. Um, and so in addition to uh, one flat brush, you may decide you want to pull some other brushes if you have any. Um, in the canvas panel, we have our vinyl stencil. Um, these are cut with the library's um, Brother CM350 Scan and Cuts, um, and it is a stencil vinyl. Um, and then we have a little bit of the transfer tape here. So we're going to set this aside. There's a first step, um, and then as with some of our projects, we'll set that aside to dry and then come back later um, and do the second step. So really you want to go ahead and remove the plastic from your canvas. Uh, you'll see I have uh, put down tablecloth for today's project because uh, the panel is so thin and if I get to the edges, I may get paint on my work surface. So I wanna be aware of that as well. Um, so some other things you might want if you have them on hand, uh, maybe a paper plate or uh, like a little palette if you want to mix your colors and create some colors beyond what we sent. A uh, paper towel for cleaning off your brush in between colors. I've got a little bit of water. Um, and then later when we get to the stencil, I've got some scissors that I'm going to use. Uh, so this part is the messy part. Um, this is where you just kind of have fun, uh, put the paint on however you want. Uh, for some folks that may be where you actually do uh, shapes or just brush strokes of the color kind of in a row. Uh, maybe start with one color, make some you know, spots here, and if you just want to do kind of the tiled look, um, or always, you know, we've got lines. I can make myself a little circle, just spin my brush around. Once I get most of the paint off my brush, I could go to another color, <coughs> come through with the red. And now because I haven't given my paint colors very much time to dry, I can see I've already pulled a little bit of that blue um, into my brush, which may be what I want. Um, if I wanted to make sure that my colors stayed separate, <coughs> as for what I prepped for the next step, um, you can see on this one, I allowed the colors to dry and then came back through with the next color. Um, that way they didn't really kind of uh, blend as much. But blending is a lot of fun too. Um, so I can actually really pull through and pull some of that color and almost instead of making paint colors separately with a palette, I can make them directly on my canvas. I've got a little bit of this yellow here. Oh, that gives me almost like the whole range. And so ultimately, as you saw with my example, I am going to make sure that I cover my entire canvas with paint um, so that then when we paint over, what will be revealed will be the paint underneath. Um, if you've got a paper towel, Maybe an extra paper towel. One of the fun things, let's see, let me get a little bit more yellow in this area so we can really show you this. Just yellow. Get that 
really bright pop in there. You can see I didn't clear my canvas so or my brush. So I have more of that color coming through. But I can do kind of a texture technique. So I've got all my paint there. I've got my extra paper towel and I'm just going to kind of blot. And that gives me a little bit the texture of the paper towel itself. So depending, you can see as I get a little bit of that there. And I can use that to fill in kind of some of my spaces. And that really blends those colors together. And there going over, I still see some of those shapes underneath. So really this is just a time to explore some creativity. Just go for, put some paint to canvas. You don't really have to worry too much about how it looks um, because ultimately with that pop of the design on top, it is going to look great either way. And the point is to be messy. So covering the canvas, I'm going to set my paint aside and through the wonder of prep work, as I showed you before, I've got this canvas that I pre-painted. So let's talk about your stencil. I've got my white to do my cover and make sure my brush is good and clean for when I paint that because that I don't want any additional colors in. And this is the part where you very likely, well you are going to, once you completely cover your canvas, leave it to dry at least overnight. And this had a couple of days so it's very dry. And then come back and get ready for this step. So we've got our stencil. I've provided a little bit of extra stenciling material on either side. This stencil is going to give us the heart, the Pflugerville heart design, which thank you to Aaron for allowing us to use this for our programs. Um, if you like it, we actually have some shirts for sale at the library with it. Uh, and it is going to just be the text of this will be white on top of your messy paint. Um, if we had the inverse, which was a little too difficult to send home in a kit, unfortunately, um, you would only put down the stenciling material of the heart itself and then the rest of the canvas would be white. So that's something where a project like this, you might want that. So here's that example. Um, just painted that a bunch of colors underneath. The whole canvas is white, although this I would definitely do a second coat um, before removing the stencil. Um, and really, maybe even at this point, I could probably go in there with a small brush and get in there and not overlap any of my um, stencil design, but I can see some of the colors underneath, which honestly is kind of a cool look as well. Uh, so this would be this type of stencil. But what everybody has for the kit uh, is where your outcome is going to be like this. Uh, so what's white will be that text of the Pfluger heart, which I really like too because it makes that um, that image pop really well on your canvas. And like you see, this is just color on the canvas and I use that paper towel uh, to daub it out. This was my test cut on the vinyl, so I had a square as well that was open. So that was just kind of fun. I thought I'd leave that there. For your stencils, um, if you're interested, you can peel off as is. It will cover the whole thing, but again, you'll only get the white of that, but you've got some extra material. So this is where those scissors would come in. Um, I don't necessarily need to cut the transfer tape, but I am going to cut off this extra piece of stencil vinyl that's up here so that I can make an additional stencil and add to my design. So I'm just going to slice that off there. Got a little bit on the bottom here. I will do the same. And what I'm going to do for the video is a really simple stencil. You could honestly draw something onto this and then cut it out uh, around it. But what I'm going to do is a really simple shape. And I actually want a couple of them. So let's do that. And then let's do two bigger ones. So um, I'm going to add a heart shape. My Pflugerville is already in a heart. I think some extra little pops of white hearts will be really cool looking. Um, and this one's going to be super simple. So I'm just going to fold that piece of uh, stenciling vinyl in half. And I could use a, a marker and draw it out. 
but I'm just going to freehand cut a little heart into there. And then I'm going to use that as a stencil. And so I'll do that to two of the little guys. It can be different sizes of hearts and you probably want them to be, to be a fun little pop. Uh, let's do this one. So, I wonder if I can make, no, let's go this way. Could go the opposite direction and make a tall skinny heart. But this one I'm going to just do a larger regular. Alright, so there are my heart stencils in addition to my Pflugerville heart. Um, I could also use these to block out um, and then paint white around. So that's another option I have. So I'm going to set my little stencils to the side. Removing this stencil um, from the backing, we've got the transfer tape. And the reason we have that is because we've got these little dots in some of the letters that I want to make sure make it onto my canvas. So I'm actually going to turn it over to the back. I'm going to pick one of the corners and I'm going to get this white backing to start remove. Holding down the stencil with my other hand, I'm going to slowly kind of roll back the um, backing so that everything should stay on the stencil. And I can see that because here on the white, there's nothing. So all of my little pieces stayed put. Perfect. So just set that backing aside. It's a little hard to see with the festive background, but here's my stencil. I'm going to go ahead and place it. Um, I think I'm going to come down for this one and then put those other hearts above it. If you've got a ruler or an old credit card or something, a piece of plastic that you want to use, you can use to burnish this down to make sure that that stenciling material sticks to your canvas. Um, I'm also just using the heel of my hand to make sure there's no air bubbles under there. Now I want this clear transfer paper to come off. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the backing, I'm just going to kind of roll it down slowly, watching it to make sure that none of my little pieces are stuck to it, that it's all on the canvas. Oh, with these bright colors, you really can't see. Oh, that stencil in there. I could see it got a little too fast. Um, the more methodical you are and the slower you go, um, the more likely you're going to not catch that uh, where it starts to pull up. If it does start to pull up and stay on your transfer paper or on your backing, I'm just going to come back over it and burnish it a little with my finger um, to pull it back again. Maybe try from the other direction. Yeah, there we go. So all of my pieces stayed. You can actually set this aside and use it again uh, for another project if I wanted, if I had a vinyl that I needed to transfer. So again, I'm just going to burnish this down. Several of the tutorials I watch for these kinds of things um, do say that you can uh, add a little bit of like Mod Podge to this to make sure that the edges of the stencil are sealed. Um, I felt like mine came through pretty well, so I'm not going to do that. Now I'm just going to add my little hand cut stencils. I'll put my one small one up here. And I can actually use this stencil to kind of window what it is I'm going to see or what it is I'm going to block out with the white paint. Again, just burnish down that stencil all along the edge of the design to make sure that there's no gaps. Those gaps is where it will be where your paint seeps through. Excellent. Okay, so our stencils are on. I've burnished them down and now comes the white paint. You may ultimately decide, as I mentioned with the, the one where I had it all mostly white, um, to do a second coat. In that case, you're just going to kind of paint over your stencil, making sure you get to all the edges. 
probably coming across from multiple directions so that you know you didn't have any areas that are missed. I'm going to allow this to dry. I'm going to come back and paint another layer on it. And then I will um, peel the stencils. The pieces of stenciling, especially these hearts, they, they'd come off really easy. It's just one piece you only have to worry about. For the letters, you are going to have to find those little internal bits of the P, the G, the R, and the lower E uh, so that you pull off those little interior pieces. Not too bad. Um, that's what I had intended the paper clips for, but you could feasibly scratch a little bit of paint when you're doing that. Uh, so instead, that little R, this little piece of the R is what's acting up for me doesn't want to stay down so I'm only coming from below it to the top that way I don't accidentally pick it up with the brush um, and cause it to have paint go under I'm not brushing very heavy either um, so that if I catch the edges of my stencil it won't peel and move I'm also not going to the complete edge of my stencil that way I have some non-painted areas to grab uh, when I go to remove the stencil. Now you may be like me and really want to see right away what this looks like. If you've got a hair dryer, you can speed up the paint drying process a little bit. Um, if you do pull this off while it's wet, beware that you may have some paint um, that drifts outside of its area and be something that um, makes your letter look a little bit lopsided. Um, what I did do on one of mine was I just took a Sharpie on this one. It's probably pretty hard to see. And I just traced the edges of each of the letter to kind of give them a little bit more definition. Um, so that may be something you'd like to try with your project. Um, ooh, if somebody had a uh, like a metallic marker, that might be really cool. Uh, to just make this pop a little bit. So as always, we hope that you enjoy this uh, virtual offering and we always want to see uh, how your projects come out. We look forward to seeing you at future library events. Please check library calendar and pflugervilletx.gov slash library for all upcoming events and fun things happening at the library. And I know I just said don't pull off a stencil while it's wet, but I'm going to go ahead and pull one just so everyone can see what will be. But again, for yours at this stage, you're going to leave it at least 24 hours, let that paint dry, um, and then you'll be able to peel up the stencil. But for this, let's just peel this one little guy right here, slowly pop it up, and there we go. And I can see that my heart has a bit of a wispy edge along here so that's something that um, i may clean up with the brush if i have a small brush or again that uh, marker i could do that with a marker as well so thanks for watching we'll see you next time